good evening guys we have been doing podcast you know the cast the podcast that actually try to break the stereotypes and the myths around placements and higher studies so today we'll take a break from the placement craze and try to move towards another section of our careers and that is higher studies with me today is pratiksha prosti more about her from her own mouth hi pratiksha how is life life is all good uh, all under lockdown yeah life is under lockdown that's true but uh, you must have been busy with your studies and your pursuits of academic pursuits all this time how did you pass the last few months of your masters is that what you are doing after your bachelor's at kiit university where are you doing your masters and what is it that you are studying uh, so i'm doing my masters in uh, solar energy uh, in denmark in an institute called as denmark technical university uh, and the last few months have been uh, focusing i have been focusing on uh, my master thesis uh which was uh, on solar energy and uh, the pv battery system why did you do the masters uh, in denmark where you couldn't you could have done it in india as well what is the difference that you see in the courses and colleges between india and european union as a whole uh so in india uh like we are more uh, based on exam based and uh, rote rot, rot learning uh and we have uh, very few exposure uh to outside world uh, uh you know just the practical experience and we are very much uh, into theoretical and fundamental uh, concepts so i thought uh, that coming to europe uh, with uh, a better quality of life and also a better quality of education uh, i would be more uh, freer to apply the knowledge that i have uh, learned during uh, my ba- bachelor's and also uh, connected to whatever i'm studying uh, right now so i thought uh, europe would be a better option in what are the exams that you took or what else did you do uh so for uh, you, any european uh, university you have to take either uh, for english uh, proficiency you have to either take toefl or uh, ielts exam uh and to check your quantitative and uh, analytical uh, skills i took uh, gre and uh, did you do any preparation specific preparation for these exams separately or was your uh, i mean preparation or whatever you had previous to that sufficient for these so uh, uh also during the last year of our bachelors uh, we know that uh, we are very much focused on placements and during uh, that time we practice a lot of uh, analytical and logical uh, questions uh, that is provided uh, by the university and also we do our own homework uh, that was the foundation and uh, for gre studies uh, to focus more i took a online uh, course uh where uh, which were more specific towards the kind of questions uh, that gre gives uh, so i prepared myself uh, using that online uh, platform and when you reached there uh, was there a long process of application scholarship house hunting etc etc or was it easy uh so uh, i have been quite a hard working uh, student even uh, right from my high school and even during my bachelors and i was uh, able to achieve a higher uh, grade because of that so uh, to apply for a scholarship i just needed to write an application uh, stating why i was the deserving candidate uh, and i got a full scholarship from uh, dtu to pursue my masters um uh and apart from that for applications is actually everything is online and uh, you just uh, fill everything online uh, all your transcripts your records and your uh, all the other official documents that's needed from a bachelor's um uh, and uh, yeah it was very easy and uh, everything is very structured and uh, if anybody is who is planning uh, to study or to come to europe can always like contact me for that uh there must it must be easy i understand but there must be some problems somewhere what are the biggest problems that you faced while settling down or doing the two years of masters that you did there uh before the masters actually i had a problem regarding my visa and 
there was a bit of issue. So that was a bit of hurdle, uh, but that was sorted out. Apart from that, uh, of course, you are completely in a different environment, in a different uh, setting, uh, where you meet uh, people from different, like, you know, multicultural, uh, it's a multicultural environment. So you need to look at what you are saying and you need to look, uh, you need to be, uh, you know, conscious about uh, what you are speaking, and uh, you need to be more uh, careful regarding, uh, like you do not hurt anybody regarding your thoughts and opinions. So uh, that was uh, that. What I I wouldn't say that was challenging, but it was something to be careful of or aware of. Uh, which skill do you think you have picked up in these two years that will help you a lot in the future? Any any skill, life skill, academic skill, whichever. Uh, I think like uh, during uh, during my bachelor's, uh, I was not that much exposed uh, to, uh, you know, the programming uh, skills. And uh, even if I, we, I was exposed, it was uh, mostly based on theoretical uh, knowledge. And uh, uh, but now after like during my uh, during my master's study, I used uh, those programming skills. In fact, I had to like con uh, continuously uh, learn more and more from it and uh, try to you know improve myself in the application part of it so uh, that has uh, like improved uh, you know the programming skills has improved uh, quite a lot and also uh, in terms of uh, collaborative uh, skills because you uh, in my masters i have worked quite a lot in different teams and uh, different project works so uh, my collaborative skills and uh, communicative skills have also uh, improved quite a lot. Okay, the most important question about masters in uh, European Union and Denmark to be specific. How is the placement seen there? Well, it's nothing like in India. It's not like, uh, uni like you don't have companies that come to universities and then, you know, you just give certain... Uh, let's just say it's not in a controlled environment so you, you i mean you need certain kind of preparations and you need to be constantly on your feet looking for different uh, job opportunities here uh, that may be specific towards uh, the skills and the knowledge uh, you have gathered and uh, and i think it gives you more flexibility and option because uh, now that uh, like you know my expertise is in electrical engineering and uh, uh, in solar energy engineering. So now I can focus my skills and knowledge and concentrate towards uh, industry that focuses uh, a bit more on that uh, rather than the mass recruiting uh, companies that we have uh, in India. So yeah. there, are, uh, there are certain reports, unconfirmed reports that you're trying for a PhD. Is that true? Uh, yes, I am going to uh, up my game and uh, try for a PhD now. I think I'm more inclined to a uh, more uh, research uh, position. And I think uh, I have reached at that stage of my life uh, where my temperament is uh, more towards a research kind of environment. So let's say you get a PhD or you, uh, you know, land one of those jobs in the self-propelled uh, placement hunt that you are doing. Yeah. So when can we expect you back in India? Uh, I would definitely like to work uh, certain uh, years in uh, Europe before I come back to my family and try to contribute uh, my skills and knowledge that I've obtained here and uh, like, you know, give back to my own country. And I know that uh, India is also a runner, like a forthcoming runner in uh, solar energy engineering. So uh, I don't think there would be a problem for me to transition from Europe uh, uh, to India, so I think maybe maybe ten years. Ten years is uh, ten years is a good time. My goodness! So you're a 2018 graduate, right? Yes. So a um, lot has lot has changed in two years. Still, is there a message that you want to pass on to your juniors? Uh, when I graduated uh, during my bachelor's, uh, I was uh, underconfident. Uh, I didn't know about my future. I didn't know whether master was the right step for me, but I knew that I wanted to do masters and there were a lot of uh, 
like equations, like unsolved equations, you could say that uh, I was very uncertain about a lot of different things, whether I'll be able to adjust, whether I'll be like live independently, uh, you know, away from my parents for the very first time. Uh, but then I think until and unless you don't jump into it, you wouldn't know. And also like, even like, I think the best thing, uh, let's say that you do not have a skill or you, you feel that, uh, uh, you feel that you are not appropriate for a job. Like, I think you should not feel that in any way. Just get the job and then later on, you can just figure out how to do the task. So I think that's the main uh, message that I want to uh, give. I, I just grab every opportunity and try taking risk and uh, be bold in your choices. You are asking, you are asking them to, uh, what is that, dump fear instead of dumping people if I have interpreted it correctly. So thank you, Pratiksha, for coming uh, down for the podcast or the podcast. Hopefully they will denge all those mm -hmm. barriers that stand between them and a good future in terms of societal expectations and personal ambitions as well. Thank you very much. Thanks again. Thank you. Have, thank you for having me.